Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and today we're going to answer the question that probably no one is currently asking, and that is, which of the current range of the AMD processors work with the B550 chipset? Keep watching to find out more. Okay, so in today's video we're going to answer the question, hopefully, of which processors from the current AMD lineup actually will work without a hitch on the B550 platform. For those of you that may have been taking closer interest in the B550 platform, you may know that AMD deliberately have removed some of the older SKUs from the supported list of processors on this board and throughout the range. So it doesn't matter if it's MSI, ASRock, Gigabyte, whatever the case may be, the B550 chipsets officially only support 3000 series processors, and that is just the processors, not the 3000 series APUs. So today what I thought I'd do is, being that I've just got this new ASRock Phantom Gaming 4 B550 motherboard, I thought I'd try some of my older processors to see which ones actually will, first of all, post, and will actually work properly in Windows. So to start this test, what I've done is I've just got a full setup. So at the moment, this is a Ryzen 3 3100 installed on the ASRock B550 Phantom Gaming 4. We've got 16 gigs of V-Color DDR RAM running at 3200 megahertz. Uh, the reason for that is because of compatibility with some of the older processors. If we went with 3600, we may struggle to get a boot from some of them anyway because of those faster frequencies. Graphics card-wise, we've got the fantastic EVGA GeForce RTX 2060 KO edition, uh, which is a new addition to the family, so I thought I'd give that one a little bit of a burn in. Also, for the storage, what we've gone is for a PCI Express 4 uh, gen device. This is from Silicon Power. They sent us over for review. This is the one terabyte model. And this is pretty much one of the fastest drives you can get on the market at the moment. And I thought it'd be interesting to see how the older processors actually cope with that NVMe storage on the PCI Express Gen 4 bus. Will it recognize it? Will it support it? Will it be backwards compatible? All those kinds of questions that I know are likely to be asked by some people at some point. So I figured I'd try and get ahead of the curve and answer them straight away. So with all that said and done, let's try some processors. So what we've got processor wise, we've got a relatively narrow selection, but I think it covers most of the bases. So to start off with this one here, this is, I believe the Ryzen 3 2200G. So that is one with onboard graphics, which definitely shouldn't be supported on this board. So that is gonna be a very interesting one. So 2200G, we've also got a rather old version. This is the Ryzen 7 1700X. Again, first generation, in theory, should not work at all. This one is the, I believe this is the 2600, uh, yep, Ryzen 5 2600, so second gen part. That is the one that I'm most likely to think is gonna work okay. And obviously this is the one we've got installed already, the Ryzen 3 3100. So we've got a pretty good spread of the various chips across the generations there. So we've got first gen, second gen, and we've also got a kind of first gen, well, the one with onboard graphics, which again, isn't supposed to work with this. So with this testing, we're gonna use a stock cooler, the Wraith cooler, and also we're gonna be using the IC graphite thermal pad. Uh, reason for that basically is just a stop mess and obviously to keep it pretty much uh, equal across all of the tests. So let's get into it. Okay, so there is the Ryzen 5 2600 installed on the motherboard, and everything's all reconnected. Uh, what do you think? Is it likely to work? Well, let's find out. So we've got some D-LEDs on there already. So we've got power. We can see everything's powered up. Is it going to actually post? I'm hoping it's going to do a couple of cycles, and then eventually it will actually come on. But I've got a feeling they may actually have completely removed these from supported devices. So DLED wise, we've got CPU and DRAM. So that's not a good sign. Okay, so we'll turn that off. And just to be on the safe side, what we'll do is we'll reset the CMOS. Actually, we'll completely discharge it, make sure there's no power left in there. Flip out the battery, and also we'll press the clear CMOS. The reset switch could do that as well. So. In theory, that should have reset the CMOS and hopefully it will recognize the chip. So, apply the power again. And same again. Two LEDs, CPU and DRAM. So just to make sure it's not the RAM, let's take out the sticks of RAM and 
in theory we should just get CPU now. No, we got both, so DRAM and CPU. So yeah, it appears they ain't lying. R5 2600, no go. All right, let's move on to the next one. Okay, so next up is the attempt with the Ryzen 7 1700X. Uh, yeah, my hopes aren't very high for this one. And actually to increase the odds slightly in our favor, I've taken out the DDR4 3200 megahertz RAM and I put in some old Samsung DDR2133, which would have been out same sort of time as this processor, just so there's no issues with the memory, that kind of stuff. So let's give it a go. Hello, McFly. No, this ain't gonna work. So same, we've got the same DLEDs, so CPU and the RAM. And the cooler doesn't seem to be doing a great deal. It's not ramping up or ramping down. No, nope, no signs of life there, unfortunately. So, our, all of our hopes are now rested on the mighty Ryzen 3 2200G. So, let's take this off and put that one in. Okay, so this is the very last chance. And this is the Ryzen 3 2200G. And as you can see, I've removed the graphics card because, well, onboard graphics. Uh, also, you can see now, you can see the Silicon Power M.2 PCIe NVMe PCI Express 4 Gen 4, etc., etc. That is a super fast drive. Actually, just to go slightly off topic, when I installed Windows on this with the Ryzen 3 3100 in the stock configuration, I started installing Windows at 4 minutes past 2, and Windows was installed by 10 past 2. Six minutes to install Windows from start to finish. Incredible, absolutely incredible. That's Windows 10 uh, 2004, so yeah, that was incredible. But anyway, I digress. So do you think the Ryzen 3 2200G is gonna work? I don't think it is, but in for a penny, in for a pound. We tried all the others, so let's give this one a last go. And uh, yeah. No way. It's cycling, it's doing something, which is more than it did just now. Oh my God. Okay. So now I'm really confused. I don't understand what's just happened. Is that because of the DDR4-2133? But as you can see, well, hopefully you can see it on the camera. B550 Phantom Gaming 4 P1.10. That's the latest BIOS version for this as of August 2020. And yeah, AMD Ryzen 3 2200G with Radeon Vega graphics. Why does that work? That shouldn't work. I think I should try the 2600 game just to make sure that I haven't done something stupid, which I'm pretty sure I haven't. I've double checked all my connections. That's, that's really weird. Really weird. Now I suppose it'll be interesting to see if it actually will load into Windows on that NVMe drive. Hmm. Very odd. So let's see what happens. So we'll exit that. Save changes and exit. Will it load into Windows? It might still try and load the NVIDIA driver for the EVGA card. So potentially we may have graphical corruption or a, uh, a blue screen because of that reason. But will it actually recognize the NVMe on PCI Express Gen 4? So there lies possibly the problem. So now we've got the uh, boot LED on. So that means there's no boot device. So it doesn't recognize the Gem 4 slot, which to be honest with you, it's completely expected because of the way that 
that particular APU shares the technology with the PCI Express lanes, etc., etc. If we were using the chipset based one, I think we'd have a lot more luck. Or if we use the SATA drive, then again, that would be absolutely fine. Expecting it to work with a PCIe Gen 4 times 4 Hyper M.2 slot drive on a 2200G was probably asking a little bit much. But hopefully that answers some of your questions. So if you're planning on maybe getting the most of your system up and ready, maybe buying a motherboard, buying an NVMe, and then waiting for processor prices to be a little bit more favorable or for a processor to actually be available, and maybe you're planning on using an older placeholder CPU or APU, then hopefully this will give some way to answer those kinds of questions. But I think I should try the 2600 just one last time to make sure that there was uh, no weird stuff going on. I still don't understand why that had booted. That shouldn't boot at all. It's not in the supported CPUs list it's not even close to it. So let's turn things off and we'll try again with the 2600. Right, slight change of plans. Uh, Calf just mentioned something to off camera, which I thought actually makes a great deal of sense. So if you are in this predicament, which is gonna be 100 to one, but if you are in this predicament where you've got your new board, you've got your NVMe and you've got your older processor, but you still wanna get Windows up and running, maybe, possibly, you've got a uh, SSD line around, which you can plug into the chipset, which is gonna take the load off of the system, et cetera. And it's basically a different way of doing it. But if you've got an SSD like this, uh, hopefully we should be able to install Windows on it. So what I've done is grab my Windows installation media. I've got my drive connected up now. So we'll see if we can actually install Windows on this platform on the B550 with the 2200G using an SSD, which uh, I personally think is actually quite an interesting way of going about it. So I'm gonna to need to boot in to the boot menu. So that is, Function 11 on this board. I have actually changed the RAM as well back to the V color, which uh, when we go into the BIOS later on, we'll, uh, we'll see what we can do there. Now we're stuck on that boot section again. Very weird. All right, let's try again. We'll try and just get into the BIOS. We'll actually reset the CMOS. Clear that. Put the boss battery back in and turn that back on. Jump start and mash the delete key to get into the BIOS. It sounds like it's memory training. Quite often with AMD systems, when you're first installing them, they will do a couple of reboot cycles to try and get the right memory frequencies and all that kind of stuff. And there we go, we're back into our BIOS. So what we'll need to do now is check everything's okay. We'll load the XMP setting just for a giggle. And if we go into storage devices, NVMe configuration, Actually, we can't disable that from in there, can we? That's a little bit of a noise. Okay, so let's uh, try the boot priority. So boot option. Yeah, it doesn't seem to be seeing the other SATA drive. Oh, there we are, SATA port four. It's showing it there. Oh, well, let's give that a go. So our boot option one is the SanDisk. Let's give that a go. And I'll try and get into the boot menu anyway. No, nope, doesn't want to have it. So it will post, but it looks like you're pretty much stuck from there. We'll try one last thing, which I know that there's probably someone out there absolutely screaming at the moment saying, take the NVMe drive out. So we'll do that just to uh, make sure that's not conflicting in any way or preventing the system. I would imagine looking at it, the fact that it actually posts means that it can recognize it. So it could actually be a BIOS limitation, in which case, as we know, with a lot of devices, they do get updates. So potentially it could be something which can be rectified. 
And I'm going to try this on SATA port one, or two rather, and see if that helps at all. And we'll mash F11 again to see if we can get into some sort of boot section. No, we got nothing. So it appears what I partially suspected is true. So you can access the BIOS with chips, which does actually make some sense. So if you do need to flash the BIOS in some way and you've got an older chip lying around, you could quite easily boot into the BIOS and do the flash process, which makes a lot of sense. I'd imagine AMD are probably gonna send out possibly AM4 chips, uh, boot kits, that sort of thing, which would be a very similar type of processor to this with the onboard graphics, that kind of thing. So that does make a lot of sense. But from what I can tell, going through these processors, going through these kind of methodical steps to see if we can get anything to work, I think the simple truth is that AMD weren't lying. They have stuck to their guns and literally the 3000 series CPUs currently are the only ones that will actually boot and post and be able to install Windows on the B550 platform. So hopefully you find this content interesting. If you have, don't forget to give the like button a little bit of a tickle. And also if you want to while you're down there, click on the subscribe button and the chime icon and you'll be notified of all the future video releases. If you've got any comments or questions on this whole B550 setup, please do let us know in the comments section below. But in the meantime, I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews now too, and hopefully we'll catch you in the next B550 review. Thanks for watching.